Chen Yao, internationally acclaimed eco-architect. His work has won more than 70 awards by integrating architecture with ecology. A humble visionary who found his life calling more than 50 years ago. I did a doctorate in ecological design and planning. And then when I finished my doctorate, it became my life's agenda. In the 1970s, some thought he was a crazy hippie architect. But Young saw the power of architecture on humanity. As human beings, the thing we're doing to the environment, we're basically um, uh, destroying it. Now, if you ask me about designing for the environment about maybe 10, 20 years ago, uh, this preventive design to stop you know, things getting worse. But 20 years later now, it is a race and rescue mission. If we don't do something about it now, then uh, there won't be that many next generations to survive our generation. But it wasn't easy being green at a time when the race was all about the lowest cost in the fastest time. This is the mid-70s, so people weren't that particularly interested in uh, ecological architecture and that uh, the engineering support was not there until, you know, around the 90s. But I found that the easiest way to bring, introduce ecological architecture uh, into, um, into my business was bioclimatic design, which is designing with climate. Uh, by designing with climate, it, it gives you an, a, a, a very strong armature in which you can add in ecological features. Now, bioclimatic design effects has uh, energy savings. And so for commercially minded uh, clients, um, you know, it was much easier to sell. Right now, I am doing green projects. I'm happiest now than I've ever been for 50 years. And I'm busiest now than I've ever been for 50 mm. years. These bioclimatic designs and eco-mimicry concepts, yes. are they more expensive to build generally? Do you spend a lot of time justifying to your clients and investors how much they have to pay? Well, I used to earlier on. But you see, if a client comes to you with, to, to, to ask for a green building, they expect to pay a little bit more. But to me, for instance, I did the Solaris building in Singapore at One North, and that was delivered at 6.3% uh, over the, the, the cost, uh, the standard cost of that particular building type. Now, the energy, the, uh, the, the justification is that uh, for that building we have energy and, and water savings and we calculate that uh, it's about 70 cents I think per square foot and that it's amortized over eight years. And so after five to eight years you get a super green building or you get a green building which is by Singapore standards it is, um, you know, it's green mark platinum. But with the energy and water savings, it continue to have the energy savings after you amortize the cost. Mm -hmm. And by, ha by, by, having, by saving energy and water, um, it reduces the servicing charges to your tenants. And so these are some of the benefits of a green building. Mm -hmm. But we really shouldn't look at green buildings as commercial enterprise because you should do green buildings because it's an ethical thing to do. It's morally right to do. It's the right thing to do. I'm Christine Tan and thanks for watching Managing Asia. Do check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more from CNBC International. Thanks for watching.